Today's video features a paid partnership with BetterHelp, but more on them later. So today we are talking about unmasking, masking, all that fun jazz. And I'm doing this as I unmask, which is I'm not scripting. Uh, for the past year or two over on my, both my YouTube channels, I have scripted everything I've ever said. I use a teleprompter and I follow it to a T. I've always planned out everything I'm going to say. And for this, I just have bullet notes. Um, and it's part of my process of our unmasking. Now, if you're unfamiliar with unmasking as a concept, um, you may be more familiar with it if you're in the neurodiversity realms, particularly when it comes to autism. And I am talking about unmasking as someone who is not diagnosed with anything such as ADHD or autism. I've been on waiting lists for a few years now, and I use the term unmasking not to diminish um, or undermine the severity of masking in the autism community, particularly. Um, I don't mean to trivialise it or say it's something that everyone does. Technically, we all mask in, in some degree, um, but severity of masking for people with a diagnosis of autism. Masking is a really debilitating thing for people in the autism community, and I hope I do not offend by using the term. It really... Um, matches my experience and that's why I'm using it but I do not do this to trivialize or understate the severity of it in the autism community. So whilst I am not someone with any kind of diagnosable labels I thought I would share my experience for anyone who may be not diagnosed or maybe just neurotypical and may relate to it. Um, I don't know what I am and I'm not particularly in a position to find out any kind of labels. This is just this human experience. And I believe masking exists on a scale um, and people may relate to this. So I thought I would talk about the benefits of potentially unmasking and the detriments of masking. So throughout my life, I've noticed that I have masked a lot, um, but the term masking has never really come into my vernacular until more recent years. What I found interesting in my masking journey um, is that I'm coming at this perspective knowing that I have masked more as I got older than when I was younger. When po most people talk about masking, they talk about these years longs, um, adaptations as it were, to fitting into society. And I realised that mine have adapted as I got older and became more severe, as I became more self-conscious as I got older that I was not normal. So before we get a little bit deeper, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank today's paid partner, which is BetterHelp. I've been using BetterHelp for over three years now, and I've encouraged many people in my life to join, all of whom are thriving thanks to their therapist on BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy as accessible as possible. And you know, even when you get the confidence to finally go out and find a therapist, finding a good therapist can be really, really hard and quite draining. But BetterHelp is a platform that makes it finding a therapist really easy. You don't have to search for hours um, on the internet or travel to get support. It's entirely online and remote, and you can be matched with a credential therapist in as little as a few days after filling out a simple questionnaire. They match you based on your needs and the type of therapist you would like or what you need help with. Um, and it's a bit like dating. Sometimes the therapist you're with isn't a good match for you, but it's easy to switch and find another therapist at no extra cost. And I got lucky, you know, both times I signed up, I hit it off with each therapist and each one's helping me with different things. One helped with my trauma and the other one's helping me with my confidence now and my neurodiversity. So whether you suffer from depression and anxiety or just are going through a really hard time right now in life, therapy can give you the tools you need to approach your life in a very different way. It's really easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description box. It's betterhelp.com forward slash Chinsu Dubois. Clicking that link not only helps this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. So masking for me in very early years was um, my accent. Um, I do not sound like where I'm from. My my, vo my voice does not match my my local hometown, which is Birmingham. I, I lived there for um, 22 years of my life. I was born and raised in Birmingham. I do not sound like I'm from the Peaky Blinders. Um, and never really fitting into that. I've masked in many ways of scripting. So I've scripted a lot of things in my life, whether it's social situations or more professionally. Um, I used to script in my jobs and I've scripted on YouTube as a career. And I think it became more and more severe as I got older and how much I bottled myself down and really hid who I was. The more I went into the quote unquote real world and became more aware of how abnormal I was. So a lot of things factored into that. Um, I was bullied obviously very severely at school, but you think, well, it's a small, you know, small pond, things like that happen. When I got into more professional work environments, I found myself getting bullied there as well, quite severely. And 
you know, I wasn't responding normally to bullying. I was eating my lunch breaks in a broom closet kind of re- response, not going into staff rooms, never socialising. Um, I struggled a lot. Um, I found um, socialising more exhausting as I got older and to the point that I stopped entirely socialising, um, even to the point that it's now becoming debilitating in terms of my professional career and my academic uh, potential because I'm I'm so scared of socialising. I can't go out in public. Uh, I can't go to conferences um, without being exceptionally drained. And I think that's the thing that I've noticed most people talk about when it comes to masking and signs that you're potentially masking is masking becomes more severe when you're around other people. When you are in situations... Um, where you're getting judged and you're trying to blend in and when you leave those social situations it's beyond the realm of just introversion fatigue that you get you become absolutely uh drained emotionally mentally physically after socializing um and you become I mean from my experience I feel really ashamed after socializing because I felt like I was being fake the entire time I found it really exhausting I found it a lot of hard work um and my decision recently to kind of unmask Um, came through um, finding someone safe to unmask around. Um, I realised that I was masking a lot around my family. I mask a lot around formal people. So people who are in more formal or more authorial positions than myself. Um, And it was only recently that I found someone that I completely unmasked around that I realised how different my life is um, versus my scripted life and who I am when I'm not completely monitoring everything that I do and say um, and questioning how I am in the world Um, and doing things that I used to find embarrassing. Like I flap my arms a lot when I'm excited. Um, I I just get, I'm a very giggly person, which no one would know uh, watching my YouTube videos. I'm an incredibly giggly person. Um, um, And it was just letting myself go and becoming less self-conscious that I realised how much masking was making me really miserable and it wasn't getting me anywhere you know I became more formal and more restrained and more masked the more professional I wanted to be um so when I was in working environments um and even now on YouTube it is my career and because I was so scared of being deemed abnormal I tried to fit into this mold of being very neat um and very clear-cut and to the point and to the point that I'm scripting so much that my personality is being dwindled and wondering why I hate existing. Like, why do I hate going to work or doing this or going to this? It's because I hate who I am in these situations. It's because I'm not fully me. I am completely masking. And it's it, there's no benefit to masking. Like, whilst, you know, you can avoid being bullied um, or horrible remarks on the internet, it, it actually doesn't really stop that either. Um, you, you're going to get people nitpick you for whatever reason, and it doesn't keep you as safe, and it doesn't get you further professionally. And I felt like I lost a lot of my life over the past few years, the more masked I became, and to the point that it impacted everything. You know, I stopped, I, part of what I've been masking against is like reading for fun. I don't do that anymore because I'm scared of the associations or what I'm like when I'm around books. Um, Cause I got really bullied in in my last like bookshop environment where I was, I was seen as a dweeb and how I reacted to books and it, it kind of put me off. And even though it's been what, six, seven years since that situation, it's, it's made me scared to be that way around people. Um, and the same with academia. I'm not the same academic that I was when I was a masked and I'm just, I've been so scared of what happened when I wasn't masking. But at the same time, masking has made me miserable over the years. You know, I've, I've become more fatigued, uh, incredibly fatigued. I've become more stressed. I've become far unhappier and I've lost passion for life, like living life in general. Um, I have no motivation. Um, it's all because I don't like how I have to be in this world. And it's a very complex situation when it comes to masking because there's a shame on either side. There's a shame that you are abnormal uh, and there's also a shame of not being yourself. And it's kind of like this weird catch-22 of being stuck in a, in a void <laughs> uh, and not knowing how to escape. And it becomes really hopeless feeling. Um, 
and just wanted to quit everything and vanish. And I've had this feeling of my whole life of just wanting to vanish and run away. And it's exhausting to keep scripting and masking all the time. And it's came to a point where I don't create as much as I want to because I'm so I'm so scripted in everything I do in life, whether that's texts, whether that's YouTube videos, whether that's emails, whether that's going to the shops, like I practice what I'm going to say before going out um, or how I'm going to order something. And it slows you down from moving through life. And even then, you're just so self-conscious um, that it debilitates you. And talking without scripting right now is has been so anxiety inducing to me but I knew I needed to do this because I'm going forward with just bullet points for four topics I want to discuss just to try and ease up my life because my life is so constricted my life is it's unbearable how I can't breathe um with the amount of regimen I live my life by um and also the amount of shame that I have for being me um and being this quote-unquote widow. So I thought it would just be maybe relatable to anyone who may feel really ashamed of who they are and anyone who feels incredibly exhausted going out, socialising, meeting people, not wanting to meet new people because it's again another, it's another person to have to add the mask to. Like I don't want to meet new people because I know that's another person I have to like mask around and it's exhausting. I can't, I can't keep up the charade um, all the time. And it's made me really withdrawn and really antisocial and really scared of people. And it's now to a point where I'm trying to risk unmasking myself and being more willingly imperfect and being more open about my abnormalities and my my strangeness in this world and hopefully by being unapologetically myself I can stop feeling so much shame for existing because I've always been shamed for existing this way and it I think it has helped having someone in my life who now completely accepts me for exactly who I am and has seen all the strange things that I do and seen it and loves it and I think that was the first time I've ever felt like authentically loved um for exactly who I was and felt totally safe and it's a shame that it has to come to that point and it's a shame that I don't ex I didn't experience that kind of love and acceptance until I was 32 years old um to realize that I can take the mask off um and it doesn't matter if other people see it as weird um, and obscure and, you know, just just like a loser. I've been called a loser my whole life from those closest to me. Um, and I've decided to just be me with or without any kind of diagnostic label as to what I am. Um, I just know I'm I'm not neurotypical, primarily because I'm dyslexic, so I'm I'm by default not neurotypical. Um, but also try and find strength in it because I can't I can't live my life anymore with these chains that I'm putting on myself. The mask is too heavy. It's it's too um it's too restrictive, it's suffocating me. And I, I'll never be happy with the mask on, so why try to wear the mask anymore, you know? That doesn't mean that all of my videos will be completely unscripted in terms of, I will have some bullet points, but I just need to let myself breathe and allow myself to make mistakes. Because see, I think it hasn't helped that the internet does not allow one to make mistakes, does not allow one to disagree, does not allow one to be slightly off the mark. Um, whether that's with a, a slight pronunciation error um, or someone not agreeing entirely with your take. Um, that's just the world. And I need to accept that I can't fit into a neurotypical world. But as long as I'm kind and considerate and honest, then I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just being me and that's not perfect but at least I know I'm not causing harm as long as I remain you know educated and I remain on top of things uh, I don't intend any ill on anyone else 
that's all I can ask to do. And I may not be everyone's cup of tea. I may not have advice that benefits other people. I may you know, be hated for things such as the way my teeth are or my faces or my hair or my accent. And, or people just may have issues with anything about me as a person. And that is nothing that I can, I'd rather it be the version that I put out there as me. And at least I know, well, I, I can't change that then keep trying to tweak the mask and go, oh, they've noticed this, so let me change that. Um, or they didn't like that, let me adapt to that. I'm done constantly adapting myself to neurotypical values um, and standards of people that I don't know and will never know. And, or even people I do know. And quite honestly, I lived my whole life trying to be the person that someone else wanted me to be. And I wasn't that person. Um, I was, and I'm a constant disappointment for it. Um, and now it is time to move on and just allow myself to be a little weirdo that I am and learn to hopefully one day accept myself fully for that little weirdo that I am. Thank you very much for listening to this video about unmasking. If you have any, you know, similar stories or if this made you realise that you'd be masking, please let me know down below in the comments. Share your story if it makes you feel better. If it doesn't, you know, don't, don't do anything that you don't want to do. Um, but other people may relate to your story in particular um, and there may be a little bit of a community down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are happy and healthy. Thank you again for my patrons as always and I will see you soon for another video. And remember, books save lives. So keep reading.